Uh, Sir Angus, my terseness, my terseness is a function of time, not temperament. I hope you no, can no, understand that. Um, you said in your opening statement that the government runs a policy. We have no role in setting policy. We do Cass's bidding. I'm just picking That's up right. some quotes from yours. And that safety pervades everything we do. Does that mean are there circumstances when Air Services has concerns about a safety issue and can sometimes be overruled by government? Uh, generally not, no. Generally not, but are there no. any circumstances in which a note or memo has been given to CASA, to, uh, to the Commonwealth, to um, the ATSB, expressing concerns about a particular safety issue where you have been overruled, in effect? No, uh, I, I, can't, I can't recall a single instance where we've been uh, overruled. And, for example, um, we did have some concerns uh, during Operation Sky Safe about uh, some of the uh, airspace. Um, every proposal that we put forward in terms of uh, airspace change for safety reasons was accepted by, uh, by CASA. Of course, there's a process. Um, they obviously uh, need to review it for safety and so on. So there's never been a circumstance where air services have said we are concerned about safety aspects of this, but you have had been overruled by government policy? Not to my, no not to my knowledge. Could that be taken on notice? Yes, I think if there's a reasonable period. I mean, I'd be surprised if there was, but... Yeah, yeah no, uh, the, um, yeah, take it on notice to find out, but not to my I'd knowledge. be surprised if there was, but if, yeah. if there was, I think that's important for yep. the public to know. Just want to go, before I go to issues of the TCU in Adelaide, I want to go to yep. issues in respect of... Uh, that uh, very disturbing incident on July the 5th at Melbourne. Yep. Uh, and uh, Dick Smith has raised issues with me about uh, Tasmanian airspace. I note you in your opening statement, uh, you're, you've assured us that it's very safe there. Um, and I think you're aware of the, Mr. Smith has spoken to me, you're aware of the correspondence you've had with Mr. Smith. I think he most recently wrote to you on the 3rd of September. Um, I'm not, I'm not don't, I don't assume, I assume that a response hasn't come, gone back to him yet. In no, 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 not, not no, yet. No, no, it was, but, a very, uh, it was a relatively recent letter. On the 1st of November 2010, a media release from, um, from Census Corporation uh, came out of East Syracuse, New York, headed Tasmania airspace now controlled with high accuracy census-wide area uh, multilateration. Is that something you're familiar with? Absolutely. Can I, yeah. Would you like a copy now, or you don't need it? I've seen, I've You've seen, seen it? the press okay. release. Okay, you need a copy, yeah, Dick, Dick a spare, spare copy. Yeah. That report in part says, or that media release in part, uh, says that the census WAM system provides seamless cooperative surveillance coverage between Launceston and Hobart airports with accurate coverage of 150 metres or better from the ground level at the airports to 18,000 feet. Surveillance data is sent to Melbourne Air Traffic Control Centre where it will provide controls with information to implement five nautical miles of separation in an environment that had largely been controlled with procedural separation measures. You're familiar with that aspect of that? Yep. Yep. Mr Smith's understanding, my understanding from looking at the papers, uh, is that there is no radar separation uh, in Tasmania airspace, uh, which appears to be inconsistent with the uh, unambiguous assurances in the Census Corporation media release of the 1st of November 2010. Uh, this, is a, this is a fairly uh, uh, complex uh, subject. Um, there's a lot to it. Uh, might I suggest that at some stage we take the uh, committee down to uh, uh, Tasmania uh, and show you the system at, as it works. So will the and, airspace uh, be radar, radar well, control? Well, um, you know, the, uh, the aircraft that go there, the aircraft, the, the airliners, uh, mm -hmm. they can be seen all the way to the ground. Um, you can see them taxiing on sure. the ground. Um, at the moment, but but it, what I'm trying to understand in terms of the the procedural uh, separa the separation that's been in place uh, since the 1930s in terms of you know radio can the old-fashioned system. It's much better than that. It's much better than that, but given that millions of dollars of taxpayer money was spent for a uh, um, this for radar separation, is that what is being is that what is being implemented in Tasmania at the moment? In other words, are taxpayers getting what they paid for in Tasmania? Travellers in and around Tasmania in the air getting radar separation? This this system uh, together, uh, what we've got is uh, a multilateration system, and each of those fourteen uh, sites across Tasmania uh, not only contribute to uh, the multi multilateration uh, picture. Um, 
they're also ADS-B uh, transmitters. But, it, but it's not radar separation as there is out of Adelaide, Canberra, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane, no, Perth. No, well, we, is, is we, that, again, is that right? again, again, if I can take you back to, uh, you, you mentioned uh, hmm. uh, the role of CASA and uh, air services. Well, uh, essentially, uh, the assessment that was made when the, uh, the system was first brought in uh, was that it would not be used for, uh, if you like, radar-like separation uh, at the lower levels, below 7,000 7, feet, um, because of, um, I, I guess, that's the judgment CASA made. Now, um, uh, if there was a, a need to do it, uh, and let's just realise what we're talking about here, uh, do you understand how many flights there are into Hobart on a daily basis? Not as many as Melbourne. Um, it's, there's uh, basically uh, 70 a day into Hobart. Yes. Uh, there's uh, 60 a day into Launceston. Uh, so the traffic, the traffic levels uh, are such that uh, there, are no, there are no problems. Bear in mind, uh, in, mm. in Sydney, we get 80 movements uh, in an hour. Mm. Um, and we're getting less than that uh, in Hobart. Right. So, so essentially, uh, if, if there was a need to, if there was a need to, um, particularly when the uh, ADSB mandate comes in, um, and T CASA did an aeronautical uh, study, uh, there would be the potential uh, to perhaps um, bring this, the system in such that you could control the aircraft uh, okay. to the ground I, I, in exactly the same way as you would with radar. I, I may put some questions on notice of this because I have some other issues to deal I, with. I know. But, 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 but is it fair to say, um, Sir Angus, that um, back in 2010 it was announced that there would be this whiz-bang system basically from, from uh, ground up to, to control airspace by radar separation. It's not being used at the moment. Is that a fair summary? Well, no, because the, the, system, the, system is used, the system is used to... Uh, uh, enhance situational awareness. The controller knows it's like it's like he's looking down uh, here on, on this carpet, and he can see everything that's happening with every aircraft um, that's in the airspace near um, uh, near to Hobart into, uh, Airport. So, but it's not the same, even though it had the technology is there, the money. So I think six million dollars of taxpayers' money was spent. It is still not of the same order of radar separation as other capital city airports? Because it provides, of it, well, um, you know, what do you, uh, you say, other capital cities? Um, Melbourne. That, that shouldn't be the test. Capital cities, uh, you know, one capital city gets um, uh, 80 movements in an hour. Uh, in, in Hobart, no. we're talking about probably five movements uh, in, yes. in an hour. It, it wasn't um, the test, it was the question as to whether you know, there's a difference. You know, I think the system, the system provides a very safe um, service uh, to the airlines to get in and out of, yeah. uh, of Hobart. I, I might put some questions on those because I just want to yeah, move please. on because time is very limited. Is a little discipline, you've got five minutes. You're a strict disciplinarian. Can I, can I invite you uh, perhaps you to come can, down but not, to... But, but, yeah. but not now, I've only got five minutes and he's, he's yeah. a ruthless chair. Sorry, I know he's a ruthless he's chair. He's a ruthless but, chair. But we would okay. love to take any members You're of burning the up my time. committee to brief You're you. You're burning up my time. But we're not allowed to go by helicopter. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I just go to the, the Allen's review, Sir Angus? Yes. Uh, can you provide us with the terms of reference of that review? Uh, yes. Or the, letter of or, or, yes. or the letter um, setting yep. that out. No, no, I'd be absolutely and, and delighted. And also, how did Allens determine whether there was a conflict of interest or not? Do they just ask people? I mean, I just want to know about their methodology for determining whether the apparent conflict of interest wasn't an actual conflict of interest. Put that on notice. Uh, in relation to the uh, issue of the Terminal Control uh, Unit Integration Initiative, um, is there a business case for consolidating the Adelaide TCU? Can, yes or no, and can you provide a copy of it? Uh, oh, sorry, so, yeah. the, 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 we've already provided that, Senator, as right. part of the last estimates hearing that there was being okay. said should be coming through. Right, and do you concede that the, the physical present, presence of the TCU in Adelaide is relevant, Mr Harfield, or Mr Hood? Can you ask that question again? I mean, in the case of the Adelaide TCU, it's been put to me that the physical presence presence of the TCU in Adelaide is relevant. 
Uh, unlike Canberra and the Gold Coast, Adelaide Tower has no permanent airspace. Uh, thus, the TCU controls aircraft from a surface level of up to 24,500 feet, and that local knowledge is a big factor. Is that something that, could, because of time constraints, could you take that assertion on notice and respond to it accordingly? Yes, we can, Senator. Okay. In relation to the issue of conflicts of interest, um, could you provide us with uh, how conflicts are dealt with in terms of, I don't need, need you to go into detail now, but is there a manual? Uh, how do you determine whether there are related parties or not? What was the system in place when the one sky uh, negotiations or the contracts were entered into? Has there been a change in that? So you can give us an idea in the last few years how that's evolved so we could have some comfort as a committee how that's evolved. So you the written material the that you provide to, provided to. Can I just go to the issue of, because the chair is very ruthless, the issue of LASO, the land and hold short operations in Melbourne on the 5th of July 2015, which has been put to me. I think you conceded, uh, Mr Hood, that that was a, uh, a serious incident. Um, I'm not sure if my information is correct in respect of this, but um, it seems that uh, in relation, it was a double go around at Melbourne Airport on the 5th of July. You stated that the ATSB is investigating the matter, is that right? This is probably best a question for ATSB, but can you confirm whether this is the case? That is the case? Are they looking at it? The ATSB advised us on the 24th of July that they are investigating the current Senator. Right. For some reason, I couldn't find the incident listed on the ATSB's current safety investigations and reports on its website. You don't know anything about that? I'm not suggesting you should. No, they advised us on the 24th of July that they were investigating the incident, and, and obviously uh, they'll be following that up as a matter Normally of course. Normally it would go up on the website, wouldn't it? Uh, it it's a normal matter, of course, but I can't answer for the no, ATSB. No, 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 and I don't expect, I won't, I won't dare suggest you to answer for the ATSB. Uh, I think we can ask them in a few weeks' time. Um, and also, in terms of the matters raised by Dick Smith about the ADSBs and F, uh, uh, that um, uh, he had, Mr Smith was quite concerned that the Air Force has a dispensation uh, in respect of the ADSB um, and that he thought that that was a double standard and unfair. Sir Angus, are you in a position to comment for, in relation well, to the, that? Well, um, um, CASA doesn't regulate the, uh, the Air Force. Um, the Chief of Air Force, the ADF uh, Airworthiness Authority, um, regulates um, all military aircraft. Uh, you in can terms see why private operators would be thinking, I've got to spend a fortune on ADSB, but the Air Force doesn't. Um, well, I think I think most of the uh, the aircraft that fly in the uh, mm. air routes will be equipped. But uh, if we could take that on notice, because really that's a question for uh, uh, the Chief of the Air Force. But if you like, I'll. Um, I'll take it on notice and come back to you. And my five minutes is up. Thank you very much. 